Hey everybody, welcome back to the Gila Den. We're going to talk a little bit about how to quarantine your animals and how to set up your new baby. For you. Hey guys, we want to talk a little bit about quarantining your animals. Uh, due to uh, some recent events in the Gila Monster community, I think it's important to really focus on this. So uh, we don't put our new lizards in with the uh, breeding group of lizards. Uh, for at least 90 days. And I know that sounds like a long time, but reptile diseases can take a long time to show themselves. After 90 days, uh, you also want to have a few tests done. So, uh, you know, you want to get a fecal test. So you want to collect a fresh fecal and send it off to a lab. And there are a few different labs. Your local vet will be able to recommend who can read those and just see. Gila monsters don't frequently have a lot of parasites because they should all be captive born animals. Uh, so that's a rare problem. The one thing that's really concerning in a collection like this is cryptosporidium and that can spread to uh, all your animals rather quickly and you can't get rid of that. That's something the animal has to live with the rest of your life. How do you justify keeping those animals and breeding them and potentially passing that on to somebody else? So cryptosporidium is a tough thing to detect. Um, there's a company called Antec. You can send your fecal through the mail to them and they can uh, do that. I don't particularly like Antec for the cryptosporidium test because they will just send you back a negative or positive, but they don't analyze to what type of cryptosporidium it is. And mice can have cryptosporidium that don't affect reptiles. And so you just get a positive and you don't know what it is until you go to the next step. So we actually send our cryptosporidium test off to the lab at the University of Florida and they will analyze it down to whether or not it's a reptile affecting cryptosporidium. And that test is about $100 and I think it's absolutely worth to get two or three of those clear tests in the 90 days of quarantine before you ever take that animal into a new enclosure. As you start collecting more and more reptiles, you have to realize that some people aren't as thorough as you're going to be. And so every animal's got to get into quarantine because if you just put it into your collection, now you've got this collection that you absolutely love, but there's a disease that falls upon the whole thing. And it may be that you don't even, it's not even a Gila monster specific disease. It may be that you get a new rattlesnake from somewhere. And frequently those aren't captive born. And so you have to worry about all these things that an animal from outside can bring inside to your collection. So when you're working those animals, uh, of course, you know, wear gloves, uh, keep them in a completely separate room, completely separate tools. I have a whole set of tools, a whole set of bowls, a whole set of uh, something else, I'm Cleaning sure. Supplies. <laughs> and then work with them uh, last. Uh, so don't work with your quarantine animals and then go work with your uh, main collection. Work with your main collection first and then I try to skip a day before I work with my quarantine animals. Uh, we use gloves when we're doing quarantine. Uh, so we just try to make sure the whole collection is separate so that we're not bringing one thing, not a bucket, not a bowl from one area to another. You know, we've had halo monsters live for 30 years. So they're a long-term investment. So take the extra time. 90 days is nothing in the scheme of things of 30, an uh, animal that can live 30 years. Take the time to do quarantine correctly and the rest of your collection will really appreciate it. So when you get a new baby, let's talk about setting those up appropriately. So some of our clients will get a new baby and they want to put it in a big cage that is good enough for the animal to live the rest of its life in. And I like the energy of that. But really, it's a bit overwhelming for a new baby. It's just got to a new spot, and they just want to be in a really tight, uh, dark location at first. Uh, so um, we set them up in pretty small environments. And when we first get them, we have them on paper towels. Uh, you can do newspaper, but I don't recommend the sand at first because you want to see every fecal. You want to know every time an animal might or might not have regurgitated. You want to see over the course of a week whether they kept that food down. And so you want to be able to keep that extremely clean. They love sand and I love to see them digging and manipulating their environment. But at least for the time that you're quarantining your new animal, just use the paper towels so you can see what's going on. Okay, so what does your baby Gila monster need? If we ship out a Gila monster to you, we usually send some uh, directions to kind of give you an idea of how to set them up at first. But put them on the paper towel, 
you give them a place to hide, just a little dry hide that they can get under, and then always have a humid hide. Uh, that's something that has sphagnum moss or a damp paper towel in it, because these animals are, while they're living in the desert, they're really spending a lot of time underground where the humidity is much higher than you would expect. And so they do need to be in those humid environments, and they like to tuck themselves into a tight little humid hide. So guys, if we ship out a new baby to you, we really want you to do it correctly. So set up the babies correctly. They gotta have a place to hide, a wet place to hide, a water bowl, and some paper towels so you can see what's happening in there. And then uh, keep them in quarantine. Keep them away from your other collection for 90 days. Even though we've got a good clean collection, we still expect that our animals would go into a quarantine in your facility so that you can just be sure of what's happening in your environment.